Hi, it's uh, Wandering Canuck here, and I just uh, wanted to do my very first video on the BioLite stove and pot. And I hope you enjoy my videos. Uh, this is my first. Let me know what you think. Six cups of water there. That's a lot of water. You would never boil that much water. But let's put this thing to the test. So you can kind of get in relation to how big this is. It's my hand. So this is the BioLite stove with the fan motor here that is powered by the heat of the fire. <clears throat> it says you're supposed to took some dry twigs. Just place them inside of this. An experiment. So we'll load this up and get it ready, and then we'll come back to when I light it. All right, I'm lighting the. Uh fire starter that comes with it. It says to get let, light it and then let it light about a third of the way up. Make sure about a third of it's going. Should be pretty steady. I put some dry tinner. It's not super dry. It's off my deck. So we'll just now put that in there. Oh. Gotta be careful with that, I suppose. that in there and put some twigs around it about it. So there's gonna be a bit of smoke. Probably shouldn't be doing this inside. Hopefully that isn't gonna do the smoke. I'm just gonna open up some they say not to do this indoors, but uh, it was so windy outside that uh, I figured we're going to break the rules. I may regret it later. I'd imagine you wouldn't need that much fire starter. So I'm going to break off a piece of it and save it. So I broke off a little over half. And you just kind of put these pieces in here and you get the fire going. You gotta think like in a situation where you might be having a tough time to make a big fire, all you gotta do is try and figure out how to make a little fire. This will keep you warm, at least in a close enclosed shelter or whatever. Once we get it going here, we'll feed some more wood. So I've got some wood here already, and that's something you'd have to have ready, I would think, unless you're in an area where there's lots of dry twigs everywhere, and then it's not a big deal. So this stove's not that efficient until it really gets going, and as it uh, as it gets going, it starts to heat things up. And uh, once it's hit it, heated up, the I believe the indicator comes on and tells you that it's ready for the motor to be turned on. I'm still learning how to do this myself, first time, first light. You just kind of, what I've seen on videos is you just kind of keep feeding wood to it. These sticks might be a little bit big. So I'll have to, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> That's probably what I say not to do it inside. Oh, that's good. Maybe we might have a fire alarm going off here soon.
Okay, so now I've turned the fire and you can see it already. See what it did to the fire? The fan on low is burning the wood a little more efficiently and you see the smoke will start to disappear with that. And it'll start to burn this wood much faster. So we're going to get this stuff that's in there burnt down a little bit. And then um, get this going. And then we'll uh, let, let the wood drop down to a point where I can put the pot on. Put a couple more pieces in and then we'll uh, get going. Now you can also burn pine cones and they recommend pine cones. Small pine cones that will burn nicely. As long as it's dry. It's most efficient now. I imagine once it really gets hot you could probably put a little more damper stuff in there and it would still burn. So you can really see how that fire is going. See how fast you burn your fuel if you just kind of turn it on high and let it on high all the time. This is on low. Once you get that fire started, it kind of keeps itself going just with the efficiency of it. And it burns, it burns everything. When you're done, there's very few ashes, very little mess to clean up. Kind of hear the fan, but it's not too loud. Now, the fan in the background is louder than the fan on the thing. So, what you're actually hearing is the fan in the background. So, now that we're going here, I guess it says to put the handle above the fan. And if there is a wind, you want the wind to be going this way. Alright, now, it's really jettisoning the heat up there. So, we've got the I've got six cups of water on here, which is a lot of water. It's about three times more water than I ever burn. In fact, in many cases, it's probably about 12 times more water than I ever burn. But this is more of a kind of a group thing. This would be perfect if you get a group. Now, it's showing that you're able to put the high on now. Now that's really going, and you can see the flame really going there. And what that means is it's capable now of charging your cell phone. So I plugged in the cell phone. I haven't quite started doing anything yet. So maybe it's not quite ready. I guess we'll watch that and see if it starts doing something. the pot is designed as a kettle. So now it's charging. It's showing that it's got a charge going here. Okay, it just indicated to me that it just started charging. So it's at 55 when it started charging. Let's just see what's happening when we finish here. Now the pot does have some holes in the side. I don't know if I should feed through those or not. It's kind of hot. I'll give that a little try though. See what happens. <laughs> Really, right now, I'm on the learning stage on this. And breaking the rules of doing this inside. <laughs> but, like I said, it's a little windy outside. I didn't feel like standing out in the wind. And you'll notice there's hardly any smoke. And now that it's burning efficiently, you don't see the flaming out anymore either. Just put in so, and that is hot. So that 
was hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to so you can put this. Now if you look at it, if you come, just don't get too close to it, but you can see this the hurricane that's in there. And that's the wind from the fan, the heat generated. The heat has generated power to support the fan. The fan in turn uh, blows the fire in a more efficient pattern. I'm just kind of put some wood in here. And it is hot. It is a hot fire, so you do need to be careful. You wouldn't let your kids play with this necessarily. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be letting me play with it. That back on, now I got some fuel in there. When it burns hot like that, it does burn efficiently, but I imagine it goes through the fuel pretty quickly too. That's really giving her now. Depends on full. It's charging the phone. I don't know how fast. It's up to 56, so it is charging. And he's doing something. And I guess the reason why you'd want the wind going this way is so that it wasn't blowing heat over top of your motor. You wouldn't want to overheat that. Six cups of water. So I haven't been keeping track of the time. Um, I'm going to get an estimate here of how long I think it took just by based on recording time. So. some fuel in there, it's really getting that fire out. It's interesting how it's not coming you know, out this head, it's really giving it out that side. It will start a twig on fire instantly. It's incredible. So you just want to make sure you got a good supply of wood and uh, enough to at least boil your water. Yeah, there's already, if you look, I don't know if you can see it, but if you look down the hole of the, of the thing there, you may be able to tell, you know, it's a little dark, but there's bubbles at the bottom of the pot already. So in a matter of minutes, in a matter of minutes with a wood burning stove, we're on verge of boil. In fact, that's six cups of water on the verge of boil i got to say it's only been probably a couple minutes, tops. In fact, the recording time on the video says it's been about five minutes. So I think we're about to have boiled water here any minute. And this suction's on, so it won't come off. Well, you see some steam coming off the top of the water here. And I haven't used, maybe I've used half the wood I originally cut here. It doesn't take much, and, and this wood was somewhat damp too. It wasn't perfectly dry. It was old, and you can hear it snapping, so at one point it was dry, but it had snow on it all. We just had some serious snow here in Calgary. Oh, that's plenty of hot. So, a few people questioning what the heck this was. what it was for. Uh, not only would you use this camping, but you could use it as somewhat of a survivalist uh, tool. Power goes out in your house, your gas is out in the house. As long as you have some wood, you can boil water, cook meals, stand near it, and it will heat, warm you up. And not only that, oof, uh, one major thing when the power goes out is you know, whether or not how you're going to charge your devices, how you're going to charge your cell phone so you can make a phone call. This is at 58, so it's gone up 3% just in a little bit of time from doing this. And during the flood and hurricane here in Calgary, uh, one of the major problems was the ability, especially in like uh, the really hard hit areas like High River where they lost their power. Uh, within a day, their cell phones were done, so they couldn't make phone calls anymore out to get help or whatever. And so, 
this is a, a way, you know, as long as there's something around to burn, and, and there was plenty to burn after that flood. <laughs> plenty to burn. All the garbage in the yard they could burn. Um, and they could have charged their phones. I don't know exactly how long it would take to, to, to charge, but you could just keep this going. It's, it's, the fuel is endless in the forest of dead woodfall. So as you can see here, we're starting to get more steam coming out of this. It's just where you pop the lid here. You can, I don't know how clear it is, but you can see the bubbles at the bottom. Now it's not a rolling boil by any means. But you got to remember this is six cups of water. I wish I had done a timer on it, but I, I forgot to do that with everything else. I was trying to get ready. So I'm starting to run low on wood now, but I, I think that I would have enough wood here to maintain the boil now. Partly I'm running out of fuel inside, so I'm going to just lift this quick, throw some wood in. There's coals enough in there to keep the fire going. So that's you know, one thing you got to be sure of as you keep the fire going. Hold that right up, and boom, the fire's going again. Self maintaining. Now, again, you wouldn't want little children playing with this. It's, you know, unless you taught your child how to deal with it, but again, I think it would be a little dangerous for a younger user. That's why we had a more vigorous bull and it started to go so that the fire go down. <clears throat> so you gotta keep that fire going, that's key. Doing a video is, is a bit distracting. But uh, there's no reason why you couldn't survive this bad situation if you had this. You could boil water, if the water was polluted, you could boil it with this. And you can boil quite a bit of water. I guess I've got here in this pot six cups of water. You could use a bigger pot. We're not limited to this. As long as your wood supply is it's good. Now you have to think about other fuels. Eventually you run out of gas. If you're big, short relying on gas, you, you'd run out. So we're trying to get bubbles coming to the surface now. Take this lid off in the final steps here, and you can kind of watch it come to a boil. I think it'll slow down with the lid not on it. We're on a verge of a rolling boil now. And you got to remember, it's my first time using it, so. Someone that's got a little more experience in using this thing would be a lot more efficient at it. Whereas I'm a fairly novice at it. It's a great little tool, and it, I mean, it's a little heavy, it's a little big, it doesn't really fit into my ultralight. Think, my mode of thinking, but you know, you're doing an overnighter and you can handle carrying a little extra weight for one overnighter or something like that, or just to have it home as a backup safety thing. I'm almost, I'm almost out of my wood. It's really going through the wood here. We're, like I said, uh, it was easy. It took me minutes, just a couple minutes to collect this amount of wood. It's not like I had a ton of wood here. Very little amount, actually. Just kind of finish this off. It self cleans itself. Or I guess that's it. <laughs> Anyways, it cleans itself as it as it burns because it burns everything so efficiently. Other than I mean, I got a lot of crap that's come off come off the outsides of it just from hanging around. With it. So just in the few minutes that we've been doing this, we're at 61 percent. So we've gained 6% just in the few minutes of doing this. Set this on top just to keep some of the heat in. Get a little more 
competition. And the beauty of the lid is that once it's boiled, you can use it to pour safely. And a lot of times these bigger pots, because the mouth is so big, they're a little unsafe to pour. You lose a bunch of your water, you just spend all that time and effort trying to trying to uh, trying to boil and make safe to drink or whatever. Now, I wish I could have should have done this outside, but it was just a little crazy windy. Now the reason for the pot the way it is is so that it is efficient in the wind. It's designed to be able to, to work in wind. It's basically the end of my wood there. Six cups of water. If I had done the two cups that I normally would do, or if I had in my smaller pot with two cups of water, it would have been boiled a long time ago. This is an adapter that's designed for it to uh, be able to use even smaller pots than the ones I normally use. Uh, pots I normally use would carry up to almost just under, just over two cups. So, less than a third of this, the size of this pot. This is good for groups and so forth. It's not a vigorous boil, but that would be considered safe to drink now if it had come from a source other than my sink. So anyways, I'm going to boil it and I really was doing this just to kind of see how it worked. Anyways, there you go, that's what this is for. Again, we've now got the charge here at 63%. So in just the small, short time that we've been on this, uh, now um, we've almost gained 10% charge. Really just over 20 minutes. Over 20 minutes of uh, filming time anyways. There you go, rolling below. It's amazing that the lid really has an effect. So as the lid pops on like that, and uh, we'll let that go. We'll let it burn out now. You can take that water and put it into any Add a hot water meal you can think of, or itchy ban, or soup. Uh, you could even cook a few things in here, rehydrate a few things in this pot. And uh, now you got to remember that this is very hot. This right here, they've made this grill here in the front so that it conducts, doesn't conduct the heat so badly. So that if you had to move it or safely, you can safely touch that. You can safely touch this. The bottom is you know, warm, but. So this is hotter here than this is here. So, interesting. Uh, BioLite's a company that originally uh, started out uh, designing stoves to help people in Africa and places like that where um, electricity and fuels were hard to come by. Water 
they needed a way to be able to boil water for safe drinking. Um, and so they've got bigger units for households. And uh, well, it's a great company. The designer made some good things here. And they decided to share it with the camping world. Probably helps with some of the funding. So anyways, it's great little outfit. Good rolling ball now. Six cups of water. Roll and boil. Only fuel, bit of wood from my backyard. I would say probably uh, you know, a handful like that of wood, which took no time to gather, process. You got a nice knife like that that can process wood quickly. You don't need an axe or a hatchet. Although, they're nice to have too. There you go. Just let one last check here. It's 64%, so almost exactly 10% in uh, the time we, period that we did that. And it will continue to charge until the fire goes out. Which, it's getting close. If you take this off, you can look inside. Bit of uh, coals there. So it just burns everything. So when it's cooled down, you can just uh, take something and once you take it apart, you can you can uh, clean it, wipe it out with a rag, bandana, whatever you've got. But you want to make sure it's nice and cool. Uh, that's one thing with wood burning stoves is they take time to cool down. But once the fire's out and nears to it, and you've taken everything off of it, it'll cool down pretty quickly, especially with the fan blowing air through it. this other fan off so you can see that noise you hear is the fan and uh, with that so I got six cups of boiled water um, six cups could make six batches of a Vichy band cup of soup six people could boil my soup so there you go some of my smaller stoves I wouldn't have even taken that long probably a lot less wood and I would have had a meal ready but there's something nice there. I mean, that puts out good heat. If you're in a shelter, that would warm a shelter. All you gotta do is keep putting wood in it, and it's just to kind of make it so you don't burn so quickly through your wood. You can certainly turn it to low, and it wouldn't burn the wood so fast. Alright, so I'll come back when I've uh, got this thing ready to clean up. So, this is the ash that came out afterwards. Now, I kind of prematurely dumped it out, but you can see there's not there's not a whole lot there. It's a very small amount of ash. And it's just, I mean, that's a lot less ash than you'd have if you made a fire to boil water with your pot over a fire. If you look inside, Just see if we can see that in there. It's not very dirty, so once that cools down, you could easily wipe that out. So this is the fan motor that comes in it. So you have your two parts. You have your part with the, the motor. And that'll fit inside. That fits inside of, of the actual stove itself. <clears throat> come in these bags. This is the device that can be used to, for smaller pots. It, it snaps on there. I don't know if I'll need that much, but uh, I guess it depends on which pot I take. It comes with a bowl. The pot does. Um, which is kind of nice, I suppose. I have my own bowls, but... Uh... Anyways, it all fits inside of the pot. So, a great base camp uh, stove, light base camp stove, uh, that doesn't require you to take any fuel. Uh, you could also take it as a backup stove. Um, there's been many winter camps I've been on where I couldn't get my white gas or propane stoves to go. And that's somebody that has a lot of experience with that and even I have had problems with it. So uh, anybody can have a problem with a gas stove. Anybody. Um, I've seen some very experienced guys very frustrated with uh, their gas stoves. 
Anyways, so I mean that's hardly any ash there. Easy to dispose of. It's already out. There might be a few embers in there, but they'll be they'll be done in no time. So this is still putting off some warmth. So I'll uh record again when I'm back to packing it up and have it all cleaned out. Alright, well I've uh, finished uh letting this cool. This is the biolite stove. Great little item. I think uh something I'll use a lot. Maybe not on my ultralight hikes, but uh, definitely on some of my base hikes and base camp hikes and such. Anyways, I'm going to go through the process of taking apart. So it's two parts. This part here is the motor fan. It just fits inside the stove itself. All right, and the legs fold on itself. Now, well, you'll notice, I should just show you, this actually, as it fits in, locks in to the back leg, and that back leg holds it in, in place. Alright, so fits in like so. Close that up. <clears throat> now, that itself can be fit, comes with its own bag. So you can put that in its own bag. But if you're going to carry it with your pot system, the pot comes with a little bowl mug that you can use. That then in turn fits inside the fits inside the pot. And then of course the lid is designed so that the Part of the fan motor fits right into the spout area and it closes on itself and of course the, the arms fold in like so and then this comes with a bag and get packed up inside the bag that it comes up. Now you'll notice here there's some soot from the fire which is pretty pretty normal I, I didn't expect to not have that um, it's just a steel and the soot from the, from the flames in the fire Anytime you're using a wood burning stove, you're going to be dealing with soot. But that in itself is kind of a big package. Uh, but when you're taking a group, or you're going with a group, you could split this thing into parts. And uh, when different people could carry different parts. And then making it a lighter, uh, a lighter item. That's the BioLite stove, and uh, I'm really impressed with it. Really happy with it. I think uh, this stove and I will go on a lot of great adventures. This has been my first video from the Wandering Canuck. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. And uh, hopefully see you soon. And happy trails.